Well, there's a fantastic opportunity to buy international art in London at the moment. Because the pound's so weak, if you can buy a Picasso or a, a Degas or even a British artist like uh, Bridget Riley or Frank Auerbach, you probably save yourself 15 or 20 percent in this market. E even we were involved in transactions on the day after the uh, Brexit at uh, the auction houses and all of them, one of them made a world record price and all of them soared away, mainly because of international buyers who saw the cheap pound. Online art marketplaces are booming around the world. What is your view on the Chinese e-commerce art market and what are some of the niche opportunities and risks for investors? We see at the Fine Art Group uh, may, mainly people looking at traveling to go and look at the art. When they buy art, they want to visually see it, enjoy the journey and, and almost have a holiday as a part of the experience of buying art. So online art is very much for the lower value where people want a commodity that they understand and can trust and they know what they're getting. I see that the online art market will take a long time to develop. Ultimately, it will be a big business, but it's still got a very long way to go before I think we see significant transactions. There are plenty of companies in this area, but not a lot of profit. You founded the Fine Art Group in 2001 and currently have some 500 million US dollars assets under management. What trends are you seeing among private collectors in terms of their investment strategy? We've become the biggest asset manager in the world in investing in art. We're uh, launching basically a lending business where we're lending money against art. We underwrite or guarantee prices of works of art at auction and we've become one of the biggest art advisors in the world. And what we're seeing is the world, we look after about 125 of the world's richest families in 23 countries and we buy on average between 10 and 20 million dollars of art a week. Um, and we, what we've seen is a huge growth. Our business has grown 50 times in the last 10 years and we see China, the reason I've come over to China is a massive growth area, but in the West we see a massive growth of people looking at investing in art, taking proper advice in art and looking at uh, the options of financing in art, which is what we, we're the market leader in. Your clients include family offices, high net worth individuals, as well as private banks. What does a typical art portfolio look like and what kind of returns can investors expect? So our biggest client spends about $30 million on art every month which is about $350 million a year. And we manage that entire collection. We manage the acquisitions and oversee the disposals and exhibitions and all that side of it. What we're seeing is that a huge number of people are coming into this market because they like the alternative asset class. They like the hedge against inflation. They like the sort of returns. Uh, for example, we bought a Peter Doig in 2005 for 880,000, sold it a year later for $2 million, so well over 100% return in a year. Um, so we buy Andy Warhol or Picasso or Modigliani. I think the most expensive picture we sold recently was about 65 million. Uh, we sold the bacon for 47 million that we bought two years before for 33 million. So there are some real opportunities if you have the access, if you have the knowledge. And the key to investing in art is absolutely understanding what you're doing. I remember one client who came in and bought a, um, a Monet when I was back at Christie's and she bought it because the gre greens and blues matched the color of her wallpaper and she spent five million. She said to her husband, we must buy that picture because it's the same color as our wallpaper. Um, that's not the type of client that we recommend putting money into art. It's got to be more sophisticated and that's what the fine art groups spend their time doing.